Hi, in this video, I want to talk about five reasons why you should have a router in your network and not a wireless router. Now you might be like, hey Behfor, you review tons of wireless routers and talk about them all the time. Now you're telling me they're bad? Then I'll be like, I know, I'm not saying they're bad. They're actually very good for many people. What I'm trying to say is that having a router for some people could be better. And here is why. Number one. If I use a router in my network, then I have a chance to distribute the workload on multiple devices rather than placing all the pressure on a single device. A wireless router is a combination of many devices joined together. This means that it is a device that performs multiple functions simultaneously. As the network grows and more devices need to be connected or more network services need to be utilized, this can put too much pressure on the wireless router, causing it to become overloaded or even overheat, which is never good. And that's why in that video I came to the conclusion that I needed to upgrade my wireless router, even though I really liked it. So it is always a more professional approach to separate these devices. By doing so, there can be dedicated hardware only for routing and securing the network and one or more access points to take care of the wireless side of the network. This way, tasks and loads can be divided among different devices, making it less likely to experience overloading issues compared to when only one device handles all the jobs. Number two. Using a router in your network is more professional not only because it allows you to load balance better, but also because routers usually come with more professional features too. A wireless router is assumed to be used in a household environment and a home network where some professional features are not necessary, so they don't usually have them. A router though is assumed to be used in an enterprise network where more professional features are required, which is why routers usually have them. Features such as VLANs, advanced VPN support, advanced quality of service, analytics and reporting capabilities, and so on and so forth. So by separating the routing and security functions from the wireless access points, I can take advantage of the specialized capabilities of each device, which is good. Number three, nowadays routers typically come with more powerful and more professional firewall features when compared to wireless routers. This obviously can provide greater security and also more flexibility to meet various network security requirements. For example, a Cisco Meraki MX device has a layer 3 firewall that allows control over network traffic flow between devices based on IP addresses, protocols, and even ports. It also has a layer 7 firewall that permits blocking or allowing specific applications or features within applications. Layer 7 firewall rules provide deeper inspection and filtering of network traffic compared to Layer 3 firewall rules. So for example, it can be used to block specific social media platforms or video streaming sites. It also has other advanced security features such as content filtering, advanced malware protection, and intrusion detection and prevention. Number 4. If I use a separate router in my network, then it will be kind of easier to make changes in the network. For example, if I decide to upgrade my internet speed beyond the capability of my current router, let's say my current speed is 500 megabits per second and I'm upgrading to 1 gigabits per second, in that case I will only need to upgrade my router to one that can handle 1 gigabits per second or higher if I want to future proof it as well. And I don't necessarily have to touch the other parts of the network such as the wireless side if of course I'm happy with it. Similarly, if an access point stops working, I can easily replace it without having to replace the router or any other devices in the network. Or if I just need to extend the Wi-Fi coverage area, I can simply add another access point. So by distributing the network functions across multiple devices, I can implement changes more easily and provide better scalability as well. 
in contrast if i'm using a wireless router and something goes wrong with it let's say for some reason it stops broadcasting wi-fi as it actually happened to me before and i talked about it in that video if i can't fix it then i'll probably have to replace the whole thing Number 5 which is the last one but definitely not the least one. Because if I use a router in my network and really learn how to configure it, I might even be able to turn that into a career. Because many companies that use these devices require network administrators or network engineers who can handle these devices and work with them. This is so important that some companies such as Cisco have their own academy and certification system to teach these skills to interested individuals. Now if you already know how to handle Cisco routers or firewalls for example, then you are one big step ahead if you decide to become a network engineer, which could be a huge advantage. So if any of those points are useful and interesting to you, then you probably want to consider using a distributed network and keeping the router separate from the wireless access points. Otherwise, if they're not that interesting to you, there's nothing wrong with using a wireless router. Please let me know in the comments below which one would you prefer or already using. Maybe you have a different reason for your decision. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this kind of a short video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.